here today. For there is a necessary a reserve of goodwill in Somalia for Uganda. We are very much conscious of the fact that your country welcomed to help her hospitality. I'm sure that you are aware of the affection the Somali people have for the Ugandan people, and I believe that the feeling is much crucial. We would like to proclaim for the excellent progress did by Uganda under your rightness and wise leadership. At personal level, I have a good memory of my colleague, the Ugandan ambassador to India, with whom I had the privilege of being friendly, whereby I served as a Somali ambassador to India in the 1980s. Your arrival in Somalia at this time is significant. In other respect, our country is passing through a difficult period. There is a political division. There is a political division and there is no central government. The economy of the country has totally collapsed and the social infrastructure destroyed in the civil strife. As the direct result of these problems, hunger, starvation, and general lawlessness are rampant in the country. The outside world has certainly awakened to the Somali crisis and is very much confused about the root causes and the nature of the crisis. The problem is, however, that the, the situation so as to grasp the real cause of the problem. Yet, they are only too eager to offer solutions. Some of them wanting to impose on us their so-called solutions through many of these outsiders offering solutions are sincere, but mistaken. For instance, we owe to, uh, this to the international community and we owe it to the next generation. Second, it is a question of morality and of a justice power of the state, the military group, the state. Siakbare create a communist police state with all its instruments of revelation, torture and death. In the next 20, 20 years, this problem, this problem is at the Somali Congress. USC, which I have had the privilege to serve at the, as it is chairman since June 1, 1990, has played a leading role in the subsequent revolutionary struggle that deposit the sporting regime. In so doing, USC did not act as an angry mob or parochial 
outlived, but it has been from the start a revolutionary movement with transparent national policy and political platform. The regime of Siapare, by force of arms in response to his re rejection of democratic reforms and to his offer of a repeated position that he had six one nineteen ninety. And <coughs> while we were in the hot pursuit, the manifesto sur click occupied all the key installation of Mogadishu with the hurriedly gathered militia and announced to the war the formation of an interim government with Ali Mahdi as the head of as, as the head and the Umar Ali as the Prime Minister. Interestingly enough, the members of the so-called government were the same as those who had served under Siapare with the exception of Ali Mahdi. At this stage, USC was facing with a dilemma whether to evict the manifesto sulh click by means of force and risk the return of Siapare, who was not very far from the capital, or whether to stand aside and try to resolve the unexpected crisis by peaceful means. We choose the later option. The immediate effect on the country of these illegal actions by the Manifesto Sur League was destructive. The entire leadership of UFC was torn apart by this obligation to save the country from these territories and this desire to avoid violence, especially in the capital city. Thus, the freedom of fight, freedom fighters in the movement became deeply depressed to seek idly by and watch endlessly the city they had just liberated, run by some deposit government in different uniforms. By crippling the USC, the manifesto suit clearly helped Seattle remain in the country and thus put the country in the anomalous situation of having the deposit ruler control one third of the Somalia where he was able to launch offensive attacks to recapture Mogadishu. Similarly, the clique's action prompted to SNM in the north to declare northern Somalia independent from the rest of the country. With the support of some foreign powers, the clique concoct, concocted the infamous Djibouti Conference, which was organized to legitimize the illegitimate attempt to absorb power by the Manifesto Sur clique. The so-called Djibouti Accord failed when the fraud was ex exposed under the most of the uh, signatories <coughs> refusing to abide by them. At this point, the Manifesto Sur clique decided to resolve the violence intended to root out the liberation movement <coughs> altogether. Thus, it organized attacks on both USC and SBM in separate engagements. But USC was able to bounce back from all this and repulse the attacks by the clique, limiting it to a small areas in Mogadishu. USC was also able to organize a coalition of four movements in finally remove Siapare and his forces from the country. These four movements, USC, SBM, Somali Democratic Movement, SDM, and the Somali National Movement, SSNM, have recently held a conference at which they formed 
an umbrella alliance, the Somali National Alliance, SNA. The alliance established institutions that will perform functions of government in the 11 regions controlled by the SNA. In terms of the priority set by the alliance, SNA will concentrate on restoring public order so that the humanitarian assistance, assistance can safely reach the need. This program requires that SNA recall and reactivate the former Somali police force. Another priority for SNA is the rehabilitation of the public facilities and resumption of the provision of public services, such as water supply, garbage collection, health area, care, schooling, and communications. Finally, the Alliance will promote peace and harmony among the Somali community throughout the country. SNA in its search for peace and the national reconciliation have already established contacts and entered dialogue with other movements to organize together a national conference in Somalia which would form a broad basic interim government for all of Somalia. In this reconciliation campaign, SNA is committed to traveling to every part of the country and to, to meeting every movement with exception of Manifesto Sulukli, which is neither a movement nor a government. There are, of course, many well-meaning people who have been misled by the clique. The SNA intend to win back the vast majority of these people by facilitating their return to the movement. Negotiation to this and end are already underway. As to the fate of the clip, a special prosecutor is investigating. It is a thank you. Somali man who was nicknamed by the British, the Mad Mula, I have forgotten his name. <laughs> yes, that man resisted the British for 23 years. So I have come here to learn, first of all, because I have been hearing that for the last two years, Somalis have been killing one another. There is mass starvation. There is uh, 
total breakdown of law and order, as uh, General Idid has confirmed in his speech. There is total collapse of the economy, as he has said in his speech. And I've also heard it from the, the international media. Then I started saying to myself, how could we help our brothers with ideas, with ideas, drawing from our own experience, the experience of Uganda. Because Uganda is rich in trouble. We have had all sorts of problems. The special ambassador here may, may not know that between 1970 and 1986, Uganda, Uganda lost 800,000 people, 0.8 of a million people killed. 0.8 of a million people killed. I myself was standing here. I fought the dictatorships in our country for a total of 13 years. It I mean eight years fighting, Milton about five years. So we have got the Ugandan experience of fighting for freedom and managing a very complicated political landscape. Landscape which is polit so politically fragmented that outsiders did not think that we would ever put it together. So my purpose of coming here is first of all to express, to show concern and sympathy for our people in Somalia who are in this situation which they are. But secondly, to pass on our own experience, our experience, not Somali experience, because we don't know much about it, but our. So I am coming here as a sick man who is recovering. Uganda is a sick man who is now recovering. Now, when you hear that there is an, another sick relative, you go, there, you go there to tell him that, you know, I was sick. I took this herb, this drug, this, this chemical, and I am now walking. I am improving. I'm not yet completely cured, but uh, I am improving. So I have come to whisper to the, the leaders here, the medicine which we took in Uganda and which has brought some, some recovery of some sort. Uganda, which lost 800,000 people, killed for political reasons, not for, not for disease, not for, just dead because of politics. Uganda which by 1986 was number four in the whole world in the export of refugees. We were number four in the whole world in the export of refugees. The first one was Afghanistan, then there was Cambodia, then there was Ethiopia. Uganda was number four. Now, as I'm speaking, all the refugees have come back to Uganda. Half a million of them, they are back to Uganda from Sudan, from Zaid. The, the, economy, the economy of Uganda is growing at a rate of 6% per annum. It's one of the highest rates of growth in Africa today. So I think my main purpose of coming here is to mention this medicine which we took in Uganda. This is my purpose of coming here. So, and, and so you can see whether you can learn anything, you can gain anything from our own experience. Thank you very much.